Big shout out to Spice who announced her pregnancy as well. Allegedly, Spice text Chaotic saying that you got her pregnant. Them. Y'all see the text. But she called you bro. She said, hey, bro, you got Not me pregnant. Not bro got, is the daddy. She said what bro. What do you mean? That's what she said, bro. Bro is like... Is you bro or bae? You know what I'm saying? We like to keep people out of our business. Where it's brother, and then there's father, and there's mother, and there's sister. <laughs> like, you know how some girls got daddy issues? Spice yeah. got brother issues. Oh so instead God. of calling me daddy, she like to call me bro. I'm telling you, man, that's my baby. All right, friend. We'll, Look, we'll that's what she calling right now. <laughs> man, Spice. Yes. Why, tell these people, man, that's my baby. They know it's your baby. You know, you know what I've been telling people? Man, I'm right now. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm right now at Ball Alert. They ask me about the baby. They say, oh, you see Spice Bay? I tell them that's my child. And they don't believe you? I don't know why they don't believe me. Spice, you don't even believe it, girl. You over there laughing. <laughs> that's, my, that, that's, that's my baby daddy. That's mine. <laughs> From bro to daddy. Okay. <laughs> to the Ball Alert Show podcast available everywhere you get your podcast. I go by the name of Ferrari Simmons. And I'm your bestie, Sue Solo. You know BT. OCT, what that? Uh, Chaotic, do your fire. What's yeah. happening? Yeah. We do snaps, we do snaps, that's, we do that's snaps. Now. What's up, sir? Yeah. Balls alert. No, I mean, baller alert. Oh, it's not balls. It baller alert. alert. Oh, I thought it was Welcome balls alert. Baller alert. Man, we should have been baller in the camera alert. rolling. He, already, he was already tripping before the camera got rolling. You came before us today. Yeah, I got here before you. I was, I, I, that's how excited I was to be on this show. What time did you get here? Well, the the the, the uh, I was. They told me to be here at two thirty, and I was here at twelve thirty. Really? Oh, what? Yeah. Why? Because my therapist told me that you should always be two hours ahead. Of anything that you got to do. Okay. Where your okay. therapist at? What? Yeah, that was my therapist wow. told me. I'm very yeah. talking to I was myself, at, but I was here at 12.30. We was impressed. We was definitely impressed. Highly we impressed. was in the parking lot. Yeah, yeah no, nah, I was just, no, that's, I got dressed in the parking lot and everything. <laughs> no, I actually felt bad. Like, I'm like speeding here like, oh my God, he's been waiting. But I didn't think you had been here since 12. No, I don't, I don't, I do not look at it as if I was waiting. Okay. I do not look at it as I was waiting. Okay. Waiting is a frame of mind. That's something my therapist told me. When you think that you're waiting for something, that's just something that's in the mind. You're not waiting. Mm. As time passes, things come. Whoa. It's a whole Shout out to your therapist. Right, well, you hosting the show yeah. with us. Yes, uh, you, know, you ready, sir? We're going to talk a little shit. We're going we 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 to get up in there. Let's get up in there. All right. Just in case you missed it. <laughs> Lil Baby and Axe team up to create the ultimate drip kit, the limited edition wax pack. A chain and a stick of Axe, Apollo uh, deodorant hanging from, like, hanging like a medallion, a bottle of Axe Apollo body wash covered in clusters of diamonds shaped like clouds and bubbles, clouds of bubbles, and a diamond encrusted forefinger ring that we re- that reads wax. So it's a chain of affordable cologne. That sounds like something Word, they that's sell all you on had to say. <laughs> I just had to make sure I read it in context. That so sounded you, like something. On, I was kind of, my mind was, I was like, that sounds like a porn. I was, yeah, I was like, is this porn or is this drugs or what is it? It's well, like know, a it's drug a porn. It's a collab. Wait, when you say they wax, a, is it like no, we, no, wax? No, no, they merge the names. They merge the so names. So baby is wham, W-H-A-M, and X is A-X-E, so it's. Instead of wham, it's wax. No, we understand. Yeah, but that part. wham is is weed. So yes. is it like weed deodorant that you put the deodorant on and you get high? No, no, just, no they just merge just the deodorant and little okay. baby. That's but that's it. valid oh, though, because wax you, is weed. But you think about it, wham yeah. and, and X. Now that would have been fire. If yeah, it would have been, been imagine that you ain't got to hit the joint now. You wake up, take a shower, bomb bomb, and you high. <laughs> are you high? And you high? Are yes. you gonna are you gonna purchase the collaboration between um, little baby and X deodorant? Well, for Baller Alert, I'm standing on Baller Alert, I definitely am. But in real life, I'm definitely not, cause Axe don't stick. I don't, I don't, I ain't gonna lie. And I probably yeah, just blew my, I just probably look. blew my Axe endorsement. But Axe don't stick. I like that. I like that. Um, mm-hmm. secret. You know, I wear you ladies wear deodorant. I know that's you wear right. ladies deodorant. Cause when I was in prison, right, they the men get the speed stick or the mm. Axe, 
and that make your underarm sweat, or it, you never, it, it, it never like satisfies the underarm, so you you okay. you get you get musty quick. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So what we had to do was we had to order the ladies <laughs> deodorant because it came in a powder form. So we would order like the ladies, uh, it was like the lady um secret, the lady secret and stuff like that. Yeah. And bum bum, you hit yourself with that, and you are gonna be. Smooth for like two days straight, <laughs> cause you know it. We ain't, you know, we ain't bathed every day. People need to make sure though yeah. when you when you were so asked to was. take a shower, cause I feel like people in high school was was not taking showers when they were putting their axe. I on. can't remember Trust. the last time I even wore an axe. Yeah. I, I used to wear axe and pack. Send a pack, pack axe. Let me try axe. Yeah, you gotta send like a pack. Kid thing, right? Like high yeah, school. Yeah, yeah. It's like it's like high school, middle, middle school. They thing. always do like the little sports samplers too. But make sure y'all put on Sports. some Correct. some deodorant and then hit the axe. Axe is supposed to be like you know a form of cologne, not deodorant. That's why I never smell good putting on axe. Yeah, you because got you got the deodorant first, then yeah, axe. hit the axe. Oh. Yeah, axe is like a little accessory. They, they don't tell you that, so you not knowing this in middle school. That you the way that they selling it and marketing it is like. Is a form of deodorant. No, you got to put the deodorant on, then hit you with the axe. Wow. The, 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 the uh, that, axe no, you crazy. The, they put the axe, put the axe instead on instead of the, the deodorant. Yeah, they yes. put the axe over the mustard. That's what yeah. I would do. I put the axe over the mustard. <laughs> That's why I'm sitting here shaming axe, but really, I ain't never knew it. Ask, y'all gotta y'all gotta send a pack out with the with the instructions. Instructions. Yeah. Put yeah. The, the instructions or put, need to be take put, a shower, put, put some deodorant on, and, and then, then put the axe. Yeah. Okay. So okay. that's like lotion and cologne. Yeah. The mogul lineup increases for buying the majority stake in BET. Who do y'all want to win? Tyler Perry, Byron Allen, or P. Diddy, aka Love. Tyler Perry. Me too. I, I say Tyler, Tyler Perry. Perry yeah. Tyler Perry. Why y'all say down. Tyler Perry? Because I don't know. Because he already dude. has a BET here in Atlanta. It might as well. BET needs to come to Atlanta anyway. Although I, w- I hope that if he does get it, that he hires other directors and writers and mm-hmm. stuff to do their own thing. So what you trying to say? I don't want to see Tyler Perry's <laughs> movies and shows. <laughs> All of them. That's what it's going to be. BET centrally located in Atlanta in uh, Wakanda. That's where it should be anyway. And he need to have Boom. some young people like myself on programming. Okay, yeah. okay. Because if Diddy buy it, BET going to be in New York. No. And if Byron Allen, I don't know where he from. I think he's from the Midwest. Tyler Perry, go ahead and buy it. So the central you know, office nah, and the offices you know, you know, you know who I want to have it? If Diddy buy it, then Carisha going to have her own network. <laughs> ne- network on that. Carisha going to be a direct then. We don't need that. We need it to be in, we need it to be in, in, in Tyler Perry hands. Somebody who know what they doing. At least you know Tyler Perry going to have all the lit shows on there. Speaking of Carisha being on our TVs, what did y'all think about her performance in BMF? Tyler, why you do this? Whole thing to be done. So I ain't going to lie. Carisha from the crib. Okay. So I don't care how bad or good the acting was. I'm just happy to see. Like I know Carisha mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. from the from the back blues, from the locks. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? From the bricks. So I know her from the project. So you know what I'm saying? To see a Brown Lee make it that far. Like Carisha wasn't no actor or no she rapper. Or no. The, that wasn't her hood. talent. Yeah. She was like a real like hood city girl for real it's still not it's still not I don't think it's still yeah. talent but I feel like she can grow there <laughs> no definitely but to, see, but to see her go from <laughs> no, no, I agree. the bricks to that I like agree. it wasn't the best job yeah. She knew it wasn't the best job. Listen, but she, she's <laughs> a far away from where she came, and Amen. I'm so proud of her. That's all what I'm the saying. Opportunities. That's what I'm, I'm saying. That it I would like up. to see her grow. I would like to yeah. see her get better in this yeah. craft. I think she could, if she perfected it and got really good yeah. at it. And she, yeah. she wasn't good at you people. I think yeah. the wig snatched off. And, 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 and I'm pretty sure she wasn't good at getting peed on because that wasn't her thing oh, before. Wait, wait. Lord. Oh, okay. um, as far as the BMF scene, I am very proud of her for, for advancing in her life and her career. Sometimes I just feel like, you know, directors and people are picking people that already have fame without thinking about who actually has talent. For the role right. and I feel sorry for people who have been putting in the work to be actors and actresses and really know what they're doing but they don't I know have they the mad. fame they I know they mad. It, right? so how do you think she did it was not good and she knows it wasn't good she, she's she been reposting you know the man the where's the scene I gotta see stuff. the scene man it's, 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 terrible. it's she not, terrible she's not she's not a, she's not a, she's not a actress though yeah, you know it's what I'm okay saying? she's it's not an actress yet but you know I seen Carisha in the scene and that's, I think, the <laughs> acting coach can help her, like, you know, vary the accent a little bit and, you know, that's get gonna into That's going to be hard. That accent's but strong, maybe, my boy. But y'all haven't that's thought it. about maybe that's why they actually getting her these gigs. 
Right. Maybe no. they don't want her to be a good actor. <laughs> no, no. No, 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 no. No. You know what? It's no. like, no, no. Well, the, the reason she getting the gig is like Marilyn uh-huh. Monroe. <laughs> Marilyn Monroe wasn't a good actor, but Marilyn Monroe, Monroe. was that bitch. Mm-hmm. So, so mm-hmm. it's like, what are we going to do? If we put this bitch in here, everybody going to tune in. So that's like how her. it was. But Marilyn she's, Monroe wanted to be an she's actress. She's a dope personality. But she, you don't think Carisha wanted to be an actress? I think, she wants, I I think Carisha wants to be an actress. I think Carisha didn't have plans for all this. It's just unfolding. And yeah. I'm, I'm glad it is, but you know, she's taking it as far as she can. It's a lot of women that wish they would be in yeah. her position. Yeah. I mean, to Chaotic's point, I think sometimes you don't, depending on where you come from, sometimes you don't see yourself going past mm-hmm. a certain a certain, la- a, a certain right. mark, yeah. you know? Right. So maybe it was just, I just want to do music. But then now look at her. She has Carisha Please and she's yeah. killing it. I really want her and to take it serious, though. I really want her to take no, it serious. No, she's going to tighten she, up. After that, she's she going to tighten future. up. Yeah. She has a bright future if she takes it serious. No, after that, she's definitely going to tighten up. You know, she, she, she. I, I, I think that what I think it is is this is all overwhelming her. Like this over y'all probably don't even know behind the scenes when she in the room with her personal circle yeah. of people, she probably having everybody pinch her back to back to see if this is real. Yeah. Like, bitch, I'm fucking Diddy. Honey, can't pop your month, bitch. Yo, yo, this nigga yo. just pissed on me last night. Oh, and I, bitch, I never let a nigga piss on me five years ago, bitch. But that piss was like gold coming down on me, hoe. And bitch, I'm in acting, bitch. I don't even know how to read the script, bitch. But <laughs> bitch, I felt like Floyd Mayweather in that room, hoe. Like this shit is for real, bitch. Pinch me, hoe, right now. Let's uh, <laughs> <laughs> what? moving what? right along. John Moran will not be back on the court anytime soon. I don't know if you guys saw that. The Memphis Grizzlies. Superstar just entered a counseling program and will not rejoin the team until further notice. Did you guys see? I bet you he gonna that? join. I bet you he gonna join if they don't make the playoffs. All I know is it messed up my fantasy yeah. football roster. Damn boy, I had you on my team and now I'm finna lose and not even make the playoffs because I need to win this week and you was on my team on fantasy uh, fantasy basketball. Appreciate you, John Moran. Hey, Adam, you you've uh, come a long way in your personal life, your career. What do you think? Ja Morant's problem is why is he on the TV screen and on the internet flashing guns when he has multi-million dollar deals at risk? Uh. What 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 do you think it is? Is Lost he trying to portray sponsorship? Is he trying no, to portray himself to be something that he's not, or what? What is he doing? So I think what the problem is, right? He probably just be hanging around too many rappers. He, that was his rapper moment. A lot of athletes in the inside want to be rappers. Mm. I and a lot of rappers time. on the inside want to be athletes. athletes. Look at look at Quavo and then Chris Brown and all them. A lot of them boys want to really be athletes. They take it serious when they be playing them basketball games. You see that basketball game with 21 Savage, them and all? They, they take that up. serious. They, Niggas, they ready to square up about that because they feel like, you know what I'm saying, they in, inside of them, like inside mm. of them, you can't tell me I ain't no soccer player because I kick shit all day. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? So I feel like Bars. I'm an athlete. But... I think that was his inner rapper coming out. He probably was drunk in the club. He he got he done snuck the scrap in the club. Like, yeah, I got the scrap on me. The song playing. I think he was listening Sh- to shame Fresh on, Sh- Shame on the owner. Shame on the, the owner. Picks. You saw that? No, yeah, the I think it was Fresh and Reckless. He, he, he owns you, the establishment. But wait, the if you get investigated, on. then the police has to take that footage. I think the police leaked that. That's yeah. bullshit. But Fresh Damn, and Reckless, I think bullshit. there's some guys off TikTok. Shout out to them. They got a song called My Blicky. And I think he was just caught up. My blicky. I think that was a fake gun. Nah, he was scrapped. That gun was too small. He was scrapped. He got scrapped. The, that's what you take in the club, the little man. He had the deuce deuce on him. I was in the club <laughs> last night with my deuce deuce, but I'd never go live with it. See, he don't. He ain't understand. Mm-hmm. Rappers ain't going to go live in the club with the fight. See, whoever, whatever <laughs> rapper he was with didn't give him the rapper manual. Like, he didn't get, right, you can't go in the club. He listened to too much NBA Youngboy. And That's what it young. is. He was listening to NBA Youngboy yep. during the live. Yep. I think NBA Youngboy commented, and he wanted to let NBA know I'm scrapped in here. Or he was probably on live and seen the op on live. Man, basketball players <laughs> don't have ops. Yeah, they do. No, they don't. In okay. his head. Basketball <laughs> players does not have ops. His they rapper do. side probably got ops. The rapper in him got ops. Who you think John Morant is beefing with? He was somebody, from his hometown. Somebody, somebody baby Warriors. daddy. <laughs> somebody baby daddy. One of them girls baby daddy. Mm. Think about it now. The so ball players good. be hitting everybody girls, everybody baby mama. So everybody you can be beefing can have with somebody. Op. It don't, yeah. have, it don't got to be like a, a op. op. Yeah, it could be a op. No, so if you got say ops. the word op, you, that means you got an opposition. That means you really got some smoke with somebody. They don't op. Yeah. We, I it, think we possible. all got ops. It's but possible. To your point, a lot of beef start over a woman. Yeah. Sure do. What Y'all you, probably hitting everybody, girl. What you think about uh, Krishan Rock and um, Blueface? Blueface. 
Do you think she's I, I, pregnant? Number one, I, and is a blue faced baby? I I honestly, I honestly and truthfully think that she probably is pregnant, but I don't think she's pregnant because if you really look, if he gay, they, she's still drinking like a fish. <laughs> is she though? No, she isn't drinking. Look I like she's been drinking. No Hennessy in a minute. I yeah, but, I, but I love her. Yeah. Yeah. I think she is the perfect definition of a down ass bitch. Well, I think that um, he's just trying to ruin her birthday, get tit for tat because he was uh, angry on his birthday. And now he's trying to make her mad on her birthday. He on his, do, yeah, on he her birthday, he wrote some very disrespectful tweets. Read that one tweet that he did. <laughs> she pregnant, missing a tooth with seven tattoos, finna make a fool of herself with the next nigga. And I'm not pregnant at all. Finna live my life perfectly fine with the next bitch who going to take me even more serious. Now it's really tragic for real. Blue now, face now, 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 let yes, me can, can I show y'all something? Now y'all know that they make their living off of public humiliation, right? Of each other. Of each other. Mm. So just think about this. Why would I believe anything coming from a couple that make money off of public humiliation? And Krishan said she, she went on live and said she should probably abort her baby. But why do I why do I believe it? They could be a lot of that could be just cap just for just to just to get people to do what we doing right now. Oh, Cause as working. long as we talking about them, people is gonna mm -hmm. tap into them and buy you know, right now in this day and age, ignorance is like the biggest, highest selling This might be the most ignorant couple. They done yeah. sex tape then leaked. This might be the most ignorant era. Her, yeah, for he sure. tweeted in response to her live, please do it. Wait, he please do what? She said she please went on live and said she should abort the baby. He said, please do it. Damn. But I don't believe that they really feel like that. I believe but, but, I think so. It's the I message think so. To, the, to, the, to the people. <laughs> it's the message to the youth that's looking up to them, thinking it's okay, normalizing right. stuff like that. I don't this. think anybody looking up to that's, them. That's that's that's. Right. that's <laughs> I mean, boy, you crazy. Of that, that, yeah. Bro, I had I had a hosting with them. Man, I walked in. They like I'm chaotic. And I'm like, yeah, what's up? I got a few girls. Go <laughs> ahead, chaotic. I'm like, okay, look at me. I'm crazy. famous, y'all. Yes. She walked in. I was like, well, damn. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I ain't that famous. <laughs> No, so don't never say them. that they don't look up to her. <laughs> they love that. That's the dangerous it's toxic. part. This is the most toxic era in life. I ain't yeah. never seen nothing like this before. This is the most toxic era in life. It's almost celebrated. I mean, Toxicity even Bobby and Whitney is was low-key. Low key. <laughs> Who? Bobby and Whitney. They, yeah. they wasn't all the way out here like that. I mean, it wasn't social media either. That, that's a fact. If it was Damn. social media they back then, they would have. that would have been... Yeah. Uh, they would. You know what? Let's, let's keep it real. <laughs> now, ain't, no, ain't, no, ain't no topping Bobby and Whitney. As far as what? Ain't no topping them as far as what? You see, as Chris, Chris far as and, toxicness. Mm. That was the most toxic ever? Yeah, I don't think Chris Sean and, 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 and Blueface Bobby got nothing on um, Bobby and Whitney. Uh, Chris Whitney and, 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 and Bobby Brown. Especially <laughs> by the way their story ended. What? Mm. Come on, man. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's just Bobby yeah. the only one here. Exactly. That's crazy. Okay. Ain't uh, Bobby daughter name was Chris, Chris Sean? Bobby, Bobby Christina. Christina. Bobby Christina. Bobby Christina. <laughs> He trying to put them all together. Lord, Bobby have Christiana my Rock. <laughs> Bobby uh, Christiana uh, one, Rock. One more, uh, before we uh, go to break, big shout out to Spice who announced her pregnancy as well. Y'all yes. know that's my baby, right? Your baby like in her stomach? That's yeah. Your or Spice is your homegirl? Wait, home that's girl. your baby? Yeah. You're the dad. Yeah, right. Yeah. He awesome yeah. Krishan hey, and, 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 and Blue. So that's your, that's your <laughs> lady? Who? Oh. Spice. No, that's my baby mama. Okay. I can FaceTime her right now. She'll Good confirm right now, For an man. existing child or the current child? I can call her right now. Good she'll right confirm. Now. Come on. Because y'all, people, people think I just be saying stuff. I like, do. You know what I'm saying? I am people. <laughs> now, which spice so, we talking about? Safari just FaceTimed me, y'all. Yeah. Tell Safari he got to come on the show. Y'all know and Safari that, and, that's and Eric and men about to get back together. <laughs> Safari <laughs> better be safe out here. Your call has been forwarded. She on the plane, bro. That's called block. She on the plane, no, my boy. She can't be on the plane no. this big. No, she, 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 she. she. <laughs> <laughs> Your call has been forwarded so to an automatic voice. Yeah, oh, that's why it's blocked right now. Stop out, stop out. Stop out. She might be the baby daddy so, for real. Blocked. Yeah. She mad. Blocked. She mad at me. Why? That's your baby that's on the way. Yeah. All right, y'all want to go to commercial? I don't think nobody live, would lie about that. <laughs> I, 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 I don't would. think anybody would lie. I think people would play. They would play, especially after just making a point that ignorance is what sells <laughs> in 2023, okay? Just Chaotic wait till the partner. baby come out and you see what it look like. <laughs> yeah, this guy right here. A change gonna come. <laughs> oh, yes, it is. 
Hold on now. Hold, that was a text. We my supposed boy. to get out of here, but uh, allegedly Spice just text Chaotic saying that you After got she her pregnant. Him. She just she just texted and showed y'all. Y'all see the text. But she called you bro. She said, "Hey bro, you got me Not pregnant." Bro got is the daddy. She said, "What bro. do you mean?" That's what she said, bro. Bro is like. Is you bro or bae? Right. Like, come on, man. Like, she can't. <laughs> I need to we know. Never, is we, you bro we don't, or we don't, we don't. We don't. We don't. We don't never refer to each other as bae. You know what I'm saying? We like to keep people out of our business. Where it's brother, and then there's father, and there's mother, and there's sister. <laughs> like, you know how some girls got daddy issues? Spice yeah. got brother issues. Oh so instead God. of calling me daddy, she like to call me bro. Okay, but that's your baby in her stomach right now. You don't see it? Look, hey, hey, you got me pregnant. You see that? But she's really pregnant for you to say that three days ago she wasn't pregnant just, at all. Y'all just said that. This ain't about what you said. You said that I ain't got her pregnant. But she, <laughs> look, who, that, who name is that? Can I'm, the camera see that? I'm telling you, man, that's my baby. All right, friend. We'll, look, we'll that's she calling right now. <laughs> Man, Spice. Yes. Why tell these people, man, that's my baby? They know it's your baby. You not you know what I'm telling people? Man, I'm right now. I, I I'm 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 right now at Ball Alert doing an interview with Ball Alert, and I'm telling them. They say they ask me about the baby. They say, "Oh, you see Spice, baby." I tell them that's my child. They don't believe you. I don't know why they don't believe me. Spice, you don't even believe it, girl. You over there laughing. <laughs> That's my, that, that that's my baby daddy. That's mine. I'm finna, I'm finna, I'm finna, I'm finna, um, you cook them oxtails? <laughs> All right, I'm on my way. I'll just wrap this in. Uh, oh, yes, I'm finna come eat them oxtails, then I'm gonna eat you. All right, baby, how that poon poon on ice for me? Okay. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you say? Uh, <laughs> I think this shit a joke. <laughs> From bro to daddy. Okay. Uh, to, yeah. Right, right. Daddy Cause she'll know, she'll know, bro. she'll know who I'm around. <laughs> but I just was filming with Spice Dog the other day, and Spice was not pregnant. I just did. A, we just did a scene last week. Oh, what I'm trying to tell y'all, you can't believe the media. I what? just we filming Love and Hip Hop together. Right. Spice just did a video shoot the other day. And it's no, she is not. That's why when I seen that, I'm like, what the fuck did this happen at? Mm. And let me tell you who else I don't believe pregnant. The brat. Really, nigga? Baller alert! Hey, yo, what's up, Available. man? It's your boy Chaotic, man. Let me put these balls on your whole head. <laughs> yo, what up, man? It's your boy Chaotic, and I'm hanging out with the Baller Alert Show. And we are back with the Ball Alert Show podcast. We're laughing because Chaotic is a damn He fool. just said I'm that a damn he baby think daddy. the brat is pregnant. Before She's that, pregnant, he said boy. he just filmed with Spice a few days ago, and she wasn't pregnant then. I didn't see the baby bump. That, that, not right, that. Yeah. Not what I see right now. But you just said that was your baby. But I really want to know. That is my you, baby. I got her pregnant that night. How Wait. the hell do you think the brat is not pregnant? We seen the pictures, we seen the video, we reported it. I got cussed out on TikTok. We seen her belly. Bro, I her brat belly. is pregnant. Watch this. I can go right now and and and, and build a whole baby and be pregnant. <laughs> Dog, this guy right. I could build my stomach and be pregnant. Okay, but why don't you? It's fair if you want to say because the brat is the man in the relationship. Her. So why is the brat carrying but the baby? She born because a she's never had the experience of childbirth. Her her wife has had. Three kids. Oh, and they wanted this thing. She it just don't. She don't look. I can't take it serious. She don't look pretty. She I did never pregnant. see the brat looking. The brat got a whole stomach, and I, you, you, don't you can't make me believe, believe she's pregnant. I can't. If I'm not there seeing the baby saying push and pulling it out, I won't believe that the brat had that baby. <laughs> oh my god. Well, that won't happen because you won't be in the room. Yeah, but be able to be in the I room, believe but she will. No, I, mean, I believe pregnant. she is pregnant. I believe she's pregnant too. So y'all don't think that's just like a little belly thing? No, I no, seen Brad boy. in real life. There's a the difference. Brad is pregnant. There's a difference between like a belly and a pregnancy belly. Facts. Oh. The, the shape, the the firmness, like is is. Well, I, I don't know because this with the baby that's coming with Spice, my first child, and like I said, <laughs> even when we was just well, together the no other kids? day. No, I don't got no kids. Wow. I'm huh. shooting blanks. <laughs> but you just said you you. Spice. I'm saying that just happened. Spice. That just happened. All right, let's let, let, let's talk about chaotic man. Chaotic for Helen from South Florida. Yep. Uh, a lot of people don't may may see you that may see you on Love and Hip Hop and mm -hmm. and socializing and in the clubs, but I don't know, know you as backstory. a as an artist. Huh? Right. They don't know your backstory. Yeah, don't know that you're actually yeah. you actually started as an artist. Yeah, from Florida. You had yeah. you had crazy. 
crazy. You had the original dreads that you, yeah, know, you wicks, let go crazy. The wicks. The yeah. wicks. That's what you know it's what called. I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, and you had goals in your mouth. Like, yep, you're a changed yep, man yep. how I'm seeing you. Yeah, because, see, you knew me when I was a drug addict, an alcoholic. Uh, when I had mental health issues, you knew me when I used to tote them guns and stuff like that. But you were like making that. really good music. Yeah, of course. Look at Bob Marley. He was high. He made great music. Elvis Presley. He hold for everybody. What's his name? Ray Charles. Heroin addict. Mm-hmm. Made the best. You know, you make the best music when you was under the influence. Now, I have a natural high, so I don't need the, the, the drugs and alcohol and stuff like that to make good music. But yeah, that's why I started at uh, making dope you? music. What led you to uh, lean on drugs like that? I'm from over town. I come from a drug infested neighborhood. Over town is like one of the biggest drug infested neighborhoods in Miami, Florida. So yeah. I grew up in the house around my daddy was a dope head. I was a, I'm a coke baby. I was born off of cocaine. Daddy used to get on the coke and hit my mama on the coke. That coke dick hit different. Mm-hmm. He used to hit her with that coke dick and then they made a coke baby. All of us was coke babies. My brother got on coke. My sister, got, I done snorted the powder. You know what I'm saying? So it's like it was. I think it was in my bloodline. You know what I'm saying? I think my daddy was on the dope. Daddy, daddy was on the mm-hmm. dope. Everybody, you coming from uh, Miami, from South Florida, and everybody, everybody like ancestors and grandparents and played with the coke so i think that it was just like i'm normal. from the yeah i'm from the cocaine city so i think it's just like a normal thing and then as you grow older you know um your urge for whatever the drug is that you use and just start to grow because of the problems that you're dealing with in life i've been in and out of juvenile and prison since i was a chick because i was just like one of them bad kids like by default, product of my environment. So growing up, you ain't you ain't finna. It ain't too many people from my neighborhood that grew up that didn't go to jail, that ain't got felonies. Like you know how the government designed it. That's why they put us um, in the projects. I saw in the clip in in the interview, uh, someone almost tried to take your life. Oh, several times. Cause I used to be a bad person. I, you know, I used to do a lot of bad stuff. My brothers used to do a lot of bad stuff. My cousins. I come from like a, a crime family. You know what I'm saying? My uncles. My brother, my homeboys, we were from over town, so we had like we had a a, a, a four cent hole. The four cent hole was like what we used to sell four dollar rocks, crack rocks for four dollars, and we used to call them four cents. And that was like a family business, like something that my uncle started, and then like everybody. What type of crack was y'all <laughs> selling for four dollars? Four cent, four cent rocks, about about about, about the size of the, about the size, and, and the rocks was about the size of the nail on my pinky. I know y'all peeped the uh, manicure, manicure claws, claws. yeah. <laughs> he that I used to always be like this. He used to be cocaine in there. <laughs> and that was um jail. But, but, but continue, continue. Yeah, so that was like our family business. And what come with the family business is, you know, getting locked up, going to jail, you know what I'm saying, knowing the codes, death before the sun, you can't tell. What come with that is uh haters and beef and and you know what I'm saying territorial wars where you gotta you know this is our bread and butter this is the way we eat people see we eating like this over here they gonna want you know what I'm saying you gonna get tested you know how I come and you know it was a lot of times in life we done got tested and a lot of things had to happen and transpire so it was just a a, a, a time in my life and probably uh probably like a three four year runner just straight Chaos. Chaos, you feel me? How many me? Uh, brother and sisters you have? Oh, man. I see. One thing about me, I don't believe that you got to be from my same daddy and same mama to be my brother. So I got many brothers and many sisters. You know what I'm saying? I don't, How many I grew don't, up in the house and, and were raised by your mama? And many daddy? of us. My daddy got on that coke and butt. All he did was made coke babies and cleared it. You know? And then my did mama. You know your dad? Nah. Like, that was something that I, that was actually like... Uh, when I when I first got on Love and Hip Hop, they went and found him and bought him, and we got a clip of him like saying like, you know, he was kind of just apologizing, saying like, like for never being there. And I was telling him like, I remember one time I was shot up. I got shot 15 times one time, right? 15 times in one time. 15 times in one time in the living room, How? in the living room of an apartment. I got set up by a female. Niggas was looking for me, so you know I I had you know I. I, I, like I said, I did a lot of a lot of you know bad things in my life. You know what I'm saying? At, at one point in time in my life, I was doing a lot of bad things. What was what was this bad thing that you did for them to retaliate like this? Well, these tear drops on my face ain't just for show. Okay, you understand what I'm saying? So, like, like life, like, like, see, I don't, 
I don't I don't run around like I'm a fun person, loose person. Uh, 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 I like push personality and have fun right now with myself because I I don't feel like I'm I'm one of them people that gotta push like my story of being a gangster or what I did in the streets. Cause really I'm trying to leave that where it was at because really it <clears throat> it wasn't like it ain't something that's fun. You know what I'm saying? How niggas make it like rapping about op shooting dead ops and all that shit and make it like it's just like a fun cool thing it, was it really ain't food. that you feel me like so but when i was in it and i was high and drunk and you know a lot of niggas do drills on dope and you know what i'm saying when you high and drunk it's easy for you to up that scrap and running you know what i'm saying but it's just like at the end of the day once you start losing people to death or to prison or even yourself, you know what I'm saying? When you have near-death experiences back to back to back, or then they're losing your freedom back to back to back, and then you see like God intervene, like that's what really changed my whole everything. The way God intervened in my life, God just constantly say, I got shot 15 times in the living room. Like my hospital records are on my page and my pen post. You know what I'm saying? Because like people be like, man, you lying. And it's like, yeah, I can pull them up right now. It'll show you. I got shot in the scalp, in the face, 12 times in the lower extremities, in the back twice. Like it'll show you all everywhere where I got shot, the whole nine yards. In the living room. So then you make it out of that. And the lady who the lady who um found me called the police said when she when she came outside, she said I was hanging out of the door of the apartment. Now, mind you, I don't even remember. The last thing I remember when I went in there, you know, I I, I, I I got there. You know, I'm thinking I'm going to link with a chick. So the chick takes me like, oh, the door open, come in. <laughs> I walk in. I had a bag with a bottle of Hennessy in it right here. And I had my phone in my, in my pocket right, on my on my hip right here. And I'm high, drunk. I'm, You know what I'm saying? I'm geek. I'm ready to go in there. I'm like, I'm going to knock this bitch block off. You feel me? I walk in that bitch, as soon as I walk in that bitch, it's darker than a motherfucker. The door, I just hear the door, like, I didn't even close the door, because when I walked in, it was darker than a motherfucker. The door closed, I felt a nigga grab me from behind. So it wasn't even like, they was just off there, I think they was about to torture my ass first, because the nigga grabbed me from behind first. When he grabbed me, I dropped the, that's not the bottle of Hennessy that was in my hand, it dropped, boom, it hit the ground. I swear to God, dog, I seen a Grim Reaper. This nigga was floating. It was a silhouette of this, silhouette of this nigga. This on everything I love. Look like a nigga came floating from the hallway, dog. It was like, this is the devil. He coming for me. You feel me? Not knowing. Uh, Satan, I'm scrapped. So the nigga holding me like this here. You feel me? Like, mm -hmm. like he, you can tell he taller than me because you holding me up here. I got this right here. So first thing I do, I'm scrapped. I don't never, I, at, that, when I, at that time, I never had a safety and I never not kept one in the head. So I upped off the rip and bum bum, dropped the devil to the motherfucking flow, sent him straight down the hill. The nigga let me go who was holding me and pushed me. When I got pushed, psh, pow, pow, pow. I just felt like it was an out of body experience. Nigga, my whole, that's why I, like stealth mode is real. Like I went in stealth mode. It was like, you ain't even feel, like you ain't even feel it no more. It's like, it's like you come out of your body. When that shit hitting you like that back to back, it's like the um the adrenaline. It's like an adrenaline mm -hmm. rush. I ain't feel shit. It's like really, I ain't even really feel it. That was just out of my body. And I remember the last thing I was saying was like, all right, all right, I'm dead. Because I, nigga, at that point, my I know the first when I when that motherfucker first hit me, I think it was my back. Bum bum, and then them shits just started coming rapidly and, the, and the, like the gun I had, I, I felt the shit just come out of my hand. In my mind, I think somebody snatched that bitch out of my hand, but I, I I knew it didn't get snatched out of my hand because I'm getting shot, so that bitch just flew out of my hand. I didn't think about it, and that's why I know majority of the shots was to the legs because it was two people in there that shot me. You feel me? And they probably wasn't trying to hit each other in a process or whatever. So they were shooting they down be. low. They was kind of like shooting down low, and then I know at the end, I got kicked right. I know I got kicked in the mouth. Cause my whole, this whole shit was like split open. Like two of my front teeth had got kicked out. Like they, they was, they was, they was on it. And then I remember the last thing I was saying, I was like, all right, all right, man, I'm dead, I'm dead. And after that, I blacked out. And then, you know, like after the fact, you know what I'm saying? I know that I actually went back over there because they told me it was a lady who found me called the police. I went and seen the lady, like, but this was way out the high hill, and I was hoping she was like still there. She was actually still there. 
And she just told me like when I when I came out of my house, she was like, you was like, like look like she said I was crawling out of the apartment. And I'm like, how the how the fuck? I don't never remember crawling out of a fucking apartment. That's why it's like, that shit is crazy. You know what I'm saying? Then one time, nigga, a nigga tried to hit me. I was with Ball Greasy. This is after this is after the 15 times. But wait, shots. going back to that, what yeah. um did is that was that the moment that changed your life? Did you retaliate or No, that didn't change my life. Did you retaliate after that? I was nigga, I went I was in a hospital. I was back I was back on my feet like two months later. They was telling me like that I wasn't gonna be able to see out this eye, but then I had like hella surgeries on it, and then they brought the vision back like this the vision in this eye is like probably at like a 75%. You know what I'm saying? It took me a while to like start walking again. They had to pump my legs. I had to pump my legs up with these pumps every day. And then when they finally let me out the hospital, they was like trying to tell me I had to be on bed rest. Gave me all these crutches. Like I'm a crippled motherfucker. I was like, y'all got me fucked up. I had to sleep on a on a, on on this this mattress on the floor in the living room because at that time I had a house upstairs, downstairs, but I could never go upstairs to my room. And I had like. Uh, this is girl named Michi. Shout out to Michi. She was like, that's why I say like, you ain't got to be my, uh, from my same mama, same daddy, mm-hmm. to be my. She was like my sister. That is my sister. She took care of me, and she used to try to like baby me. And I used to, like, I used to have to call her phone. She was upstairs every time I needed something. I never used to call her phone. Every time she used to come downstairs, I'm crawling to the kitchen on my elbows, trying to get shit out the refrigerator. You know what I'm saying? I, when I had to pee, I used to roll over, grab the cup myself. Like, I ain't never, when I was shaking back, I never got no help. Like, she always used to try to, every time she used to catch me, she used to catch me, or she'd hear me screaming, oh, she come down, why is you trying to? But I just, all I wanted to do was get back right. Nigga, I even fucked before I was supposed to fuck and <laughs> nutted blood. Oh, oh my, God. my God. Because I got, one of the shots hit me right here in my inner thigh, right by my, right by my shit. So it was like, like, for a, for a long time, like I, I had to like probably for like a month, month, a month and a half straight. Every time I was sex, I would come blood. Wow. You mentioned that at, at one point you found God or you felt that God changed your life. If it wasn't at the time that you got shot 15 times, at what point do you feel that you really felt a spiritual connection? Well, I mean, I always felt the spiritual connection, but I just always ignored it. But what was the moment that changed your life that made you want to quit the drugs and just change okay, your life? Okay, so the, the so so bomb. Fast forward, it was a, it was a case. I, I was in uh, North Carolina. I was going to do you know make some moves with some work, and the dude who I was dealing with was so called my homeboy. So when we got out there, the dude to do business with him or whatever, he tried to play. He tried to do something flaky, and and this on this on this on line two, so you know I end up popping him like seven times, bam 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 bam. He got hit like seven times, and we jumped in the car. Me and my other dog, we jumped in the car, and we hit it. They, the people in the neighborhood called the police. So we on the expressway trying to make it back from Raleigh, North Carolina, to um to Atlanta. But we we just shot a nigga. So we trying to figure out how how you you know what I'm saying. We end up jumping on the expressway. We hitting on the expressway. Nigga, I probably tell you five minutes I'd be on the expressway. We seen state troopers. So we got off the expressway and ended up in a goddamn airport. We thinking we finna try to get away. The place that we got 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 off at was at the airport. So we got off at the airport. We jumped out. Only thing a nigga knew to do was throw the gun, try to get up out of there. Bomb. So fast forward, they locked me and my dog up. You know what I'm saying? We already saying, listen, I ain't saying nothing. You ain't saying nothing. Bomb, we established that. We go to jail. When we get into jail, we get arrested for shooting with intent. They charge both of us with the same thing. Shooting with the intent to kill, uh, trafficking, and attempt to arm robbery. Because he said we tried to rob him. And they and, and the charges was against Jason Parker. So when we got in there and they they when they when they booked us and stuff like that, and I'm like, Jason Parker, who the fuck is Jason Parker? In my head. I'm like, this nigga named Raymond. Mm. And then I'm thinking like, damn, whole time, this nigga, I thought this nigga, this nigga, so this nigga done gave me a fake name, all this. I knew the nigga for a couple years. So I'm like, damn, I ain't even know who I was really dealing with. Fast forward, while we sitting in the holding cell, he come in a motherfucking uh, jail, bandaged oh, all up. So we like, what the fuck? Fast forward, I end up finding out 
At the hospital, they found out his name was Raymond Tootle, but he told the police that his name was Jason Parker. It was already too late. We already booked with charges of shooting with the intent to kill and attempt to armed robbery and trafficking with Rain. I mean, with Jason Parker, not Raymond Tootle. You understand what I'm saying? Mm. So we facing charges against a person that don't even exist. Right. Wow. You understand what I'm saying? This is what I'm trying to show you how God works. If this wasn't to happen, our life was really over. You know what I'm saying? We were probably so they had to do- drop the case because <coughs> he gave the wrong it's name. It's not a person. Now what? But we sat at that time. We didn't have lawyers. We had public defenders, but we knew we gonna get off. So we had to sit. He ended. They sent him to prison. He had a warrant. Oh. He had to end up eventually go to. They bandaged. He was a fat nigga. So those little seven shots with a 380, it did something to him, but it ain't taking him down. So he ended up having to go to prison on that same case because he was already warrant, violation of probation, all type of BS. So we end up sitting in Wake County Jail in Raleigh, North Carolina for like 16 months before we uh we both. So y'all just up. sitting there and y'all know like, man, we... And guess how they did us? The criminal justice system so fucked up. They wanted to get us for something. So they told us credit time served for the trafficking. Mm. We could have said no and rolled it out longer and just had no convictions. But man, niggas ready to get home. So right, right. Yeah. I took that. I took that. I took that F. Okay, y'all just want the felony. Okay, come on. I've been in this bitch 16 months. And right then and there, the whole time, like I say, that's why I say you ain't got to be for my mama and my daddy to be my brother. Whole time I was locked up on that bed, one of my homeboys in Miami had came up. You know what I'm saying? He came up. He was doing real good. And he was holding me down that whole bed and just telling me, dog, when you come home, dog, you got to take the music serious, man. We finna, we finna get right, bro. You too talented. You... He, you know, he know my story. He knowing all of the shit I done been through and back to back. He like, man, we got to take this music serious, bro, when you get home. So then when I came home at that time, you know what I'm saying? I was like, I'm finna take this, I'm finna take this, I'm finna take this music serious. Because prior to that, before that, I had a charge where I was finna, where I could have had 15 to 20 years for assault and uh, a robbery and assault and a possession of a firearm by a convicted felon. Well, it was a nigga who said I robbed him when it was really a drug deal going bad. It wasn't a robbery, but he, he put the law on me because What's I smacked Okay, so because I smacked him with the pistol. And then you And I took his money. You got a lot of drug deals going wrong. No, but what the thing was <laughs> was this. No, no, the thing was was this. You make me bring you something, right? Mm. And when I get there, you know what it is. But now you say, oh, nah, I don't want that. Well, I done rode all the way from across right. town. Don't play at me. You finna get that. You knew what it was. Oh, I need a better price. So really, you think, you, you don't even know. Boy, I'm a psychopath. Oh, you think it's a joke? So I smack him up and I take it. Bum. I didn't even know he called the police after the fact, after I was gone. And put a whole case in. I robbed him for his money and ain't said nothing about the drugs. You understand what I'm saying? So I'm casually in the same area Two days later, walking across the street. And this is why I hate thugging. What I mean thugging is, in Miami, we call wearing the same clothes for like two days straight. It's thugging. So here I go in my same outfit I just smacked this man up with, walking across the street from a hotel I was trapping out of to the gas station with my pistol on me. And this is just like, that's why I say it's, I walk across the street. As I'm in the, in the middle, that's the medium, right? I'm in the middle, the police ride by, and they... See me and they slow down and they go to bust you. I'm like, oh shit, I got my strap on me. I, as soon as I seen that, I try to, you know, run back across the street to the hotel. I see them pull up in the hotel. When they pull up in the hotel, it's a vending machine. I took the gun off of me, dropped it in, in, in the vending machine uh thing. And then I walk, was walking through the hall. As soon as I came on the other side, the police get on the ground. What's up, Mr. Chaotic? I'm like, how y'all know my name Chaotic? Oh, it's written right there over your forehead. We've been looking for you. Like, damn, oh, he done man. T- he told told. I'm like, damn, man. So they put me in the handcuffs, sit me down on the on the uh on a curb. I see them going towards the vending machine. I'm like, ah oh, shit. It's a hill right there in front of me. The dumbest shit I ever did. I got up off the sidewalk with the handcuffs and tried to run up the hill to get away. I fell, rolled down the hill. They laughing at me. What made you thought you was going? I'm like, I got to try something. <laughs> Y'all finna take me in. <laughs> oh my God. So Bonnie ended up telling me that um Telling me what it was for, all of that, bomb. I go to court 
two days later to the first uh um what you call it hearing first hearing the first hearing the dude show up at the hearing he show up at the hearing point me out that's the guy and tell a whole different story tell a whole different story He's so mad at me that I took that bread from him. He came to court on me and all, but he told a whole different story from the story that he told them when we when I first when he first called the police. So bomb, another situation like wow, that situation. It gets out. It gets a, he's not a credible. He's not uh -huh. a credible. This is not even much a credible case. But again. I wasn't in a financial position to have a really good lawyer. I'm really nickel and diamond out here, so I ain't powered up to have a good lawyer. I sat 15 months before they came at me and say, all right, we'll drop the armed robbery, we'll drop the assault if you just take credit time served for the possession of a firearm by a convicted felon. Come now, on where, with where it. What was this at? That was here. Damn. So now, now let me just fast forward to y'all. Now watch this. I'm a habitual criminal like I'm a habitualized if I go to jail right now for a charge that means that they can seek the maximum penalty for whatever it is mm -hmm. like he can go to jail for driving with suspended license right now and they just uh, send him home and say boy or they might not even lock him up they'll write him a ticket for that mm -hmm. me I go to jail for driving with suspended license you get the they max. gonna want if, if it's a year if that if that carries a year you that's what that year. that's that's what I'm saying. So, at what point does love and hip hop come into play with with all this that you got going on in life? When does love and hip hop come in, and how do you transition into being on TV? So, bum, when I came home, when I came home, I got back into from that last time I, I got locked up. I came home, I got back into the music. So I went to banging, I went to going hard, I went to doing the music I had. Coming back and forth to Atlanta. Coming back and forth to Atlanta. That's me and Ferrari used to do a lot of business back then. Like he was like. Playing a record the whole nine yards, I had a, a real good motion going. I had a whole vibe going, and then bam, I got locked up again. Now I see, you know what I'm I see you in a minute. I got, I was locked up. I was gone, and at that time when I got locked up, that's when Kodak came out. So like that Kodak wave, actually that Kodak deal was my deal, because I had Atlantic right at that time wanting me. I had Koch wanting me. I had several different These labels. Everybody had the song. Had I had the song. Y'all had the same swag going on too. With the yeah, Jersey yeah. I, and I had a record called These Hoes for everybody. That was like, you know, saying I had I had Lucci on that. I was touring with Lucci, Kevin Gates, Black Youngster, um, you got Rest there. in Peace, Young Greatness, Rest mm -hmm. in Peace, Bankroll, Fresh, um, Free Rollo, Free Wi-Fi, Lucci, uh, Schoolie. All that was like, if it was a freshman class. That was my fre that would have mm -hmm. been my freshman class, but they wasn't doing freshman class at that time. But that was my freshman class right there. Gotcha. All those guys, and um, I'm still cool with all them guys. I ain't never had no beef with none of them or no pressure. So shout out to all them that's doing their thing. So loving hip hop. So then, bomb. I go to jail. I come home, back broke again. Mm -hmm. Like you know what I'm saying? Fucked up. I'm trying to figure out how I'm finna get myself back together and get back on my feet. Uh, and the only thing I had was a cell phone. And you know who, you know, I, DC Young Fly. Shout out to DC Young Fly. I was watching DC Young Fly. He was doing skits, going crazy. Mm -hmm. And I was like, damn, DC Young Fly done took off. Like, from the time where I was, you know what I'm saying, doing my thing to going to jail, come up with DC Young Fly, is popping on the ground, going viral. And I'm like, shit, I'm, I got personality too. Fuck it. I started just making it. <laughs> I started making it because it ain't cost me nothing. Right. I started making Instagram videos. Talking shit, doing stuff, cause I didn't have a bag to start pushing music again. So I just started doing Instagram videos. And like two months of that consistency and started going a little viral in and, and Florida and stuff like that. And two months after that, Love and Hip Hop hit me. They was actually looking for an artist with some personality to bring to the show because everybody, it was so much drama on it, they didn't have no personality. So they was looking for somebody with personality and just because I was doing mm -hmm. those videos, mm -hmm. they so that's another reason why I always tell people you never know who watching. Yeah. Because just because I was doing those videos, I knew you were gonna be up. great when I said I saw you on the show. I said, "Oh shit, yeah, here you go." Yeah, they, they, okay. they, so what made you cut the dreads and get your teeth done? Yeah. yeah. You know, I, I got like three more getting shot stories and shot at stories, but we, oh, I just Lord. want that to be known. Like, I, but we ain't got to get into <laughs> it. You can always come back. You can always come There's back. There's a lot of more stories. You know what I'm saying? And I, I, I always, I always said, you know, because Jay Z say, 
You respect the one that got shot, and I respect the shooter. But Jay Z, I was both. I was the shooter and the one getting shot. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> because I, I, you know, when I tell my story, I tell it about you know being shot at or being shot. But I'm never, you know, glorifying what's understood ain't got to be explained. Right. So you know what I'm saying? I ain't, I ain't never being the type of person that trying to just make it like, yeah, man. I, you know what I'm saying? But you know, why, it go both you ways. Why'd you cut your hair, brother? Cause that you know that's a hard thing to do. No, let me tell you, you why. You switched your whole look up though. No, the but let me look. You, you, you're handsome. And you was, you, you a little, was all you under there. No, you. I was telling you. So yeah. I started the um when I when I took my goals out. So basically, you did the goals I, first. Yeah, I did that. I did that last year, February, because coming into 2022, I said, you know what, I want to um I want to do more in TV and more in film, and I mm-hmm. felt like having the goals. Was really limiting Limited, that, yep. so I was like, you know what, I'm gonna take my goals out because I want to do more in film and more in TV. I was never gonna cut my hair, FYI. So I took out the goals, and when I took out the goals, that same month I started working out. I'm like, man, I took out the goals. Everybody loving my smile. I might, I might as well start like working out and getting fit because <laughs> my legs was always real small from when I got shot up because I used to have to wear bags on my legs. So I used to be like, man, my legs chicken, my stomach a little fat, <laughs> like my upper body look bigger than my lower body. I'm slick, bad body on the low. You feel what I'm saying? And I got the nice smile. I need to get the body to match. You I'm feel what I'm saying? So I started working out. And I, I'm a year in now consistently working out. You feel me? Like So I started my workout journey February last year, and I'm a year in. On working out And then I started Eating healthier Because I wanted to live longer Because I'm in my 30s So I'm like Damn bro You in your 30s You know what I'm saying You gotta live longer You know you know how people Have their New Year's resolution right. So yeah. it was like That was one of my New Year's resolution I wanted to eat better I wanted to look better And I wanted to feel better And mind you I'm already sober Like I've been sober Since I got out when, Since I got on Love and Hip Hop I got sober Just to get off track For one second I went sober because I was in the scene on Love and Hip Hop one time. And I see that every time we go in scene, they feed everybody alcohol. Mm. And when they feed everybody alcohol, that's when everybody just act, act, act like uh, crazy. They turn the Ringling Brothers. Everybody just become, you know, puppets on the string. And people don't, they, they don't know what they saying. They just saying right. it. And then when the show airs, they regretting everything that they mm. did. They're like, damn, because they was, damn, they was I could, cause you was lit. They try to blame it on editing. And they, and they, the bear, they blaming it on the editing, but yeah. the reality of it is, you the one who getting drunk going in there and saying everything. Because yep. get what? On Love & Hip Hop, you know how many times they told me, hey, you, you know, because they gonna, they'll, Loosen give you, up. they'll give you, <laughs> they'll give you something, they'll remind you like, oh yeah, didn't you say something, something about this person? So yeah, go in there and say it. Just because they say go in there and say it don't mean you got to say it. But if you drunk and you ain't in your right mind. Yep. They gassed you into saying <laughs> so, it. So, Bob, after the first month of filming, I peeped that. And I said, you know what? I'm going to go sober because I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to drop the ball on this opportunity. And I don't want to. Smart idea. And I don't want to be in scene on my, on my level and say the wrong thing about somebody or do the wrong thing and then bam. I blow my whole face. So I, you know what I'm saying? Because there's two ways you could do it. You could come off as a cornball on the show and people just look at you like you're a cornball or you could say something on the show that make the world hate you because you said something against women or you said something against gays or just yeah. going against the community guidelines of what the what the people in the world think mm-hmm. is right or wrong. So I say, nah, I'm going to be on point. And that's what made me go sober. And ever since then... I'm five years sober now. Fast Come forward. On now. Man, you know what, I'm saying? Man. So what, yeah, yeah. what led to the hair though? Bomb. So fast forward. Bomb. <laughs> In 2018, <laughs> while I was filming Love and Hip Hop, I caught a charge, another charge. Like, you know, the devil be riding my back. Because I was getting followed by an unmarked police car. Mm. And I ain't know there was the police. Because mind you, the, the, the third, the fourth time I got shot at. Well, this was the second time I got shot. I got shot two times this time. So all together, I done been shot 17 times. So on this time, I got shot two times. Somebody followed me from finger licking on the expressway, and they dropped the whole whip. And my homeboy was in the front seat. He got shot two times in the back. And I got hit in my knee and in my foot on that on that, on that, that occasion. So I got followed. And then there was another time my car got shot up leaving uh, this club called Climax in Miami where a nigga tried to follow me from the club and drop my whip. So I, I got PTSD 
of people jumping behind my whip and following me and trying to drop my whip. So when I when I seen the police, I didn't know it was the police. Even though I wasn't active, I didn't actively have no beef. I just felt like you no know, certain demons gonna always haunt yeah. you. So I ain't I ain't knowing this could have been some old somebody on my trail. And then you know my brother in prison, he got thirty years. My brother got four bodies, twenty uh, 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 aggravated assaults. 15 robberies like my brother had and that's on my pen post and this is my brother saying daddy saying mama so it's like you know I could be having demons from him or my cousin right. we got a body second degree murder like, he got 28 years going on. it could be from anything so it happened to be the police but I I just sped I brought him on the chase I had my helmet in the stash spot I grabbed the helmet out the stash spot and I'm riding I'm, I'm trying to get to like I'm on the expressway. I mean, not on the expressway. I'm on a on a on a on a um access road. Yeah, you, you can drive this way and drive that way. But I drove on the wrong side of the street and was hitting it. Mm-hmm. And I was and I, right when I was finna cut through the light and try to hit it off the back street because I was really finna try to hit the back street and like get at an angle and just hang out the window or something because mm-hmm. I'm like I ain't <laughs> y'all ain't finna get I, in my head. I'm like if I take another shot, I'm dead. And as soon as I went through that light. Boom, I got into an accident and crashed. And this is on, you know, YouTube everywhere. So, boom, when I crashed, uh, I jumped out because I wasn't hurt. And I, and I ran. When I jumped out to run, I seen it was the police. They laid me down. I'm like, well, why y'all ain't never put y'all lights on? So they ain't never put the, they, they didn't put the sirens on. Oh, they didn't on. cut the sirens on. So you think somebody really trying to kill you? And that was, that was on my storyline yeah. for Love and Hip Hop. That was a part of my storyline because that happened while I'm filming. Wow. So that was a part of my storyline. I'm talking about I'm in court. Every court date, everything, they filmed it. So fast forward, I was out on bond for that for five years. Just now, January 17th, I went to trial because they wasn't trying to drop the cases against me because I'm a habitual. Mm-hmm. So they wanted 10 years from me. You understand what I'm saying? And they, yeah, yeah they wanted 10 years from me. And I was facing 10, and it was like, Shh, I got to go to trial. Yeah. So my lawyer told me, hey, you're going to have a jury in here. You know, you got your teeth done. You, you got you got to look. You feel me? He was like, we're going to put a little makeup over them tattoos. We're going to cut them dreads off, and we're going to go in here and fight for your life. Okay. And I'm like, shit. Damn, I don't want to get rid of my dreads. You know, I'm I'm a Florida boy, so in my mind, like these dreads, mm. in my mind, I always thought Samson. My dreads is my script and all this you know, whatever it was. So then, bum, I ended up cutting the hair and I beat the trial. Mm. Congrats, so congratulations. congratulations. I still here. Cutting off a lot of that. Yeah, that, so I feel like I energy. cut what you had. Yeah, on so the whole time I'm thinking I'm holding on to strength. Yep. Mm-hmm. When I cut that, it's like I cut all that bad energy off. And when I went inside that courtroom, God blessed me and, yeah. I, mm-hmm. and I beat the trial. That, that is so you. So real. guess what? I posted the, 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 the post of me cutting my hair. And it just went extremely viral. Yeah. Yeah, because you didn't Shave tell people room. why you were cutting it. Nobody knew. Yeah. yeah. Nobody knew why. Because I didn't want to speak on my trial in my case or nothing. I was, it's just like I even my lawyer said, you know, don't speak on nothing. Don't because I was gonna mm-hmm. post. Keep I'm about cute. to post on, on Instagram. Y'all pray for me. I'm going to my lawyer say, don't do none of that. Yeah. This you was the, this was a paid lawyer this time, right? Yes. There you oh, go. Yeah, no, yeah. I, there you go. The money, the money right. So me, you know, me. the money got right, you know what I'm saying? So it's like the money got right. I from now I got I got I got two, three lawyers now. I got an entertainment lawyer. I got a criminal lawyer. Yeah. I got heard an accountant. I'm, I'm set up now. It's but obvious that man. God was like really in your life and covering you. Super obvious. But now yeah. you got new music coming out. Are we going to hear any collaborations with any of your Love & Hip Hop co-hosts? Okay, so right now I got a single out called Princess Treatment with my um, ex-fling, Suki Hunter. Your ex-fling? You okay. know, me and Suki was a thing okay. at one point in time. A real thing? Yeah. Or like a spice like, thing? No, me and Suki was a real thing. Okay. We used to go super viral together every day. Like we used to, me and Suki used to be like Chris Sean and, and Blueface, really. <laughs> oh lord! If you if you watch this, if you ever go to YouTube and type in Chaotic and Suki, it's gonna take you on a journey. You're gonna be like, wow, that was really crazy. Like we was like like how how Blueface and, 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 and Chris Sean was, but this Instagram was lit, but it it wasn't like as lit as it is right now. This was back in 2016, 2017. So Pr- Princess Treatment is the name of the song with your ex, with Kiana. Suki. With okay. Suki, yup. That's out right now. That's Y'all scream that. That's doing really well. 
And then I got I actually got a record with Spice. Your future baby mama? My baby mama. Okay. <laughs> I got a, I got another record with Safari. Uh me and Erica Banks got a record coming. And I'm dropping one with Rennie too. And I got my Speaking album, me. I got my album called, my album is called The Provider. You know what I'm saying? So I got an album called The Provider. Where the book coming out? Cause your life, I'm telling you, is a whole book slash documentary slash. Yeah, it's movie. coming. It's, it's definitely coming. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's definitely coming. It's just I got. I'm juggling so many things right now. I, I still got a lot more accomplishments. I got a lot more things I gotta accomplish before I give them the full story. So once I once I hit the pinnacle of my career, yeah. then I can say, "Bomb! It's time to drop this and get it to them." Cause now I can show you the full success story yeah. and that's why one thing about me like now I carry God in everything I do and I always mention God in everything I yes. do and I always thank God and I just always tell people like you know stop begging from God we gotta stop mm. asking God for stuff Be and grateful. just thank God you know what I'm saying for everything that just being for me just being alive and free is enough you know what I'm saying? All of this right here is just, this is like super, being here, bro, this is super big for me. Mm -hmm. Like, you know how some people, they feel like they bigger than the platforms or they mm -hmm. bigger than the, uh, like, even with Love and Hip Hop, like, I even tell them, like, all the time, I be like, I'm so grateful for this opportunity. Because you got other people on there, man, they I'm tired of them handling me like this and that. Well, some people act like they bigger than Love and Hip Hop, and I always be like, and I ain't going to say no names, but it be like, if you so bigger than Love and Hip Hop, then why you still on it? Yeah. It's like the person at, 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 at the job that's always like, man, I'm about to quit today. Yeah, but why you ain't quit? <laughs> no, I think God mm -hmm. has definitely saved you a lot of times. Um, do you ever think, and this is my final question, do you ever think that you could, will grow from the name Chaotic? Uh, I mean, to be honest with you, of course. But I, I, I just feel like, you know, that's what everybody know me from. You know what I'm saying? And I guess, to be honest with you, I feel like I'm not even that no more. I ain't even gonna lie to you. And that's what I see today. I ain't, I ain't even that no more. You feel but me? outside of that, though, I think the name Chaotic is is kind of like a, a, a testimony. Yeah. Like, we no. all didn't come out and just be these saints and perfect. No. And we all have stories. And your story may seem chaotic to some, but just make sure you celebrate where you are today. Like, that's true. Yeah. And I only ask because I know a lot of artists, sometimes they mm -hmm. grow from their situations and they drop their old name and they become yeah. who they really are. Well, whatever name and they're born into or whatever, but that's why I act. Yeah, salute to you, brother, because I, I I was there. I yeah. was there when you was <laughs> when you was transitioning <laughs> yes. from being chaotic, the street guy, into the professional rapper, and then yeah. even Fashion where you're designer. at right now. Yeah, yeah. Fa we ain't yeah. even talk about the fashions yet. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. So yeah, man, I got my 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 drip. I might call my clothing line trash bag. Oh, true. I thought that was you had it on right now. So this is not no. yours. Oh no, this is me really like showing love. Actually, this is one of my Instagram followers who um reached out to my DM and sent me like they stuff and it was like and I was like that's dope. So I I just like I wear they stuff cuz you know we filming love and hip hop right now. So I I I wear, I wear people's stuff on the show. So wait, you that's did love. say before we started too that you're on Love and Hip Hop Atlanta? Yeah, I'm doing Love and Hip Hop Atlanta and Miami? right Miami. How I got to Atlanta was we did the family reunion. You know, okay. they do Love & Hip Hop family yes. reunion where they take people from all Love & Hip Hops and they take you on the island and bomb. So when they took me on the island with the family reunion, <laughs> <laughs> I was so lit and so turned that the producers from Love & Hip Hop Atlanta was there. And they was like, yo, um, we want you to come to Atlanta. We don't want you to do Miami this season. And I'm like, oh, for sure. And I was like, you know, it's crazy. I got a crib in Atlanta right now. I had just moved to Atlanta again. So it's like, it was like, yeah, we want to bring you on Atlanta. And then they had two other shows for me. It was like this show called Girls Night Out and this other show where are they now or some, some, something like that. So I end up like just off of being in Jamaica and my personality and energy from the family reunion end up getting me on three other shows. That's dope. That's so dope, bro. Atlanta and then two other um, spinoffs. So yeah, God is the greatest, man. He is, Amen. man. He's working in your life. Chaotic yes. on the Ball Alert show. You got to come back and give us a part two because I know there's yes. more stories you have to Well, tell. I want to come back when I drop my album next month. Okay. Um, th The album is called The Provider and the genre of the album is Afro R&B. Yeah. Okay, Afro R&B. Right. Yeah, so I, okay, I, I created that genre. Y'all heard it here first. <laughs> Afro. So if you ever hear somebody talk about Afro R&B, just did. know they beat my swag and I did it first. Okay. So it's your boy, you ain't do that first. Oh, <laughs> Uh-oh. 
Hey, out of the Ball Alert Show, we'll be back with Baller Mail. Message. It is now time for Baller Mail. Okay, I have a question for Ball Alert, but it will re- I would like to remain anonymous. I've been married for five years, and we have three kids together, and I have a daughter from a previous relationship. My husband treated my daughter like his by giving her attention, buying her things, up until we had our daughter together. We've been with each other since my daughter was 11 months old, and when I ask him why he treats her different, he says it's her behavior or because he can't feel the same way about her as he feels his own. He only wants her to be disciplined and not the other kids. Should I leave him or should I wait for a change? Because I know my daughter can feel different treatment. I'm I'm not letting my child feel any type of insecure way in any new relationship. You either going to treat my child like yours or we're not going to be together. That's just it. I mean, you got to give him advice. What what should she do? Should she leave her man for treating her daughter that's not his any different? Yes. Because now they have a daughter of their own? Of of course. Of course. Because when you sign up for it, those everything. I got a girl right now who I talk to. She got three dogs. I hate them dogs. (laughs) But I have to accept them dogs in my life. Mm -hmm. So I be walking them for them. Cleaning them all. Can you wash the dog for me? Oh, God, I hate these dogs. Listen, man, you can't just leave a marriage uh, just based off of, you know, a hiccup in the in the, uh, in the marriage. I believe that that is... <laughs> you know, this, you know, you know, you know. So, look, I, I believe that, you know, uh, they definitely should have a talk. Um, you know, maybe go to marriage counseling or something like that. But you can't just leave a marriage just because of, you know, a, a hiccup in the, in the situation. You know, marriage is supposed to be forever. The death do us part. That ain't no hiccup. Treating my child differently. Uh, yeah, I, I'm definitely feeling a way if a kid is not being treated as equal. All kids should be treated equal in a definitely. relationship, marriage, or even if it's just a situation ship. All kids should be treated the same. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, at all I, times. Yeah, I don't, yeah, you don't leave. You don't, you don't do that to no kids. So I don't know. I think you should explore some counseling. So work yeah. on that. And he probably he he got to be a stand up guy if he gonna he got to treat them them babies the same man. Amen. Because they ain't asked to be here. Well, thank you for that baller mail. Before we get out of here, we have a pep talk. So I'm chaotic, and um, I would just say, uh, believe in God. You know what I'm saying, and believe in yourself, and don't 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 focus on the problem. In anything, if it's a relationship, if it's a situation, if it's a job, if it's a something that you're trying to do, don't focus on the problem. Just always focus on how you can solve the problem. So always think of a solution than sitting in the problem. And then it'll get you a lot further in life because you won't bask in the problems and you'll just be more solving the problems until you get to where you want to go at in life. Be a problem solver and not the problem. That's, that's what I got for y'all. 